Hey, I know how to transition well. <laughs> well let's fix this here. No, no, maybe. There we go. That'll work. Good evening, everybody. We're back again with another animal talk. Tonight we are talking about mountain beavers. These are a um, these are a goofy little animal that I get the pleasure of interacting with on a fairly regular basis. Uh, work is fairly seasonal in general, so I interact with them whenever I get a call for them, realistically. So mountain beavers are a smaller rodent type mammal. Uh, they are, I call them gophers on steroids because they're about, they can be anywhere from um, one to two and a half pounds. So they're pretty, they're pretty small. I'd say maybe the size of a football at, uh, at best, maybe a slightly overinflated football. Um, they are specifically found on the western front of North America. So touching just up into Canada, they're on the western side of Washington, Oregon, northern and um, northeastern section of California. So they are purely on this side of the country. Uh, they're a goofy little animal, honestly. Uh, they're diggers. What they do is they dig straight into hillsides and bluffs. So you're going to find, wherever there's slightly hilly terrain, is where you're going to find these guys digging away inside of it. Oh, hang on. My mom said she wanted to tune in on this, so i got to make sure I post my... There. Now at least I have a reminder for her to uh, come and take a look. So <laughs> just as a way to make sure. Because in order to comment or chat, you have to have an account. And I don't think she's going to want to set up an account. And that's okay. So threw my thing out. I should have done that like 15 minutes ago. Whatever. I'll figure it out one of these days. So, but with mountain beavers, uh, they're fairly dopey just from what I've experienced with them. They are a very simple animal. Um, they are predominantly herbivorous, like all rodents. They will on occasionally eat uh, whatever is they find available, but they predominantly feed on vegetation. Um, food items can be this plus um, Ferns, nettles, fireweed, bleeding heart, salmonberry, brambles, dogwood, vine wood, vine maples, willows, alders, conifer trees, and rhododendrons are some of their favorites. Uh, dahlias, I've seen them strip dahlia gardens down to nothing. They make rabbits look bad when it comes to obliterating landscape. Uh, they will do what's also called girdling. Girdling is where an animal will chew off the bark surface they're the bark surface of a tree in order to get to the the bark nutrients they will do that often mountain beavers can climb they do a little but not very well uh they'll climb up uh some bushes some excuse me uh, some thinner trees uh saplings and whatnot new growth they'll climb those they'll, they'll straight up cut um very thin uh new growth trees uh, they will they'll pretty much take anything up to about two inches, two to three inches in diameter, um, at the most. Usually, yeah, a little less. My numbers are a little I'll need to be a little less than that. Um, their bodies are unusual because they're considered primitive in terms of how their bodies function. Um, their very their kidneys are terrible, uh, very inefficient in terms of an organ function, and they need to drink about a third of these guys in uh, a third of their body weight in water come with these guys in kirkland absolutely these guys absolutely are all over kirkland kenmore bothell uh shoreline edmonds all around that area they are all over the place i get them in woodenville i get them in redmond renton all over the place they are very much endemic so they're they're pretty common to find them around here and when you do find them, it's going to be a uh, three to five inch burrow hole dug right into a hillside where basically these guys, um, they'll dig out 
a hole going straight in. They're not like groundhogs where they'll dig down and then go around from there. They'll do one tunnel straight back and they'll go 10, 15 feet on average, but they'll do two to three of them at a time. Um, as one gets too soiled, they bury it, dig further, bury it, dig further until it finally collapses and then they have another one to go to. So they can pick between a couple different locations that they'll use. The reason they got the name Mountain Beaver, one, they live in the more hilly mountainous regions of Washington or of the Pacific Northwest, and they end up um, they end up snipping these branches, trees, leaves, whatever, and they drag it into the burrow, just like a beaver would take it into the water to either turn it into a dam, lodge, or bury it in their underwater storage facility. Yes, we will talk about that on beavers another time. Um, let's see. But the way the, the, one of the other ways to tell apart, and this is such a niche thing, the way you can tell the difference between a mountain beaver and a porcupine. Yes, porcupines. The way you can tell the difference from them is that a mountain beaver eat things from the bottom up, whereas porcupines eat from the top down. So when they trim, they go up from the bottom, and uh, porcupines trim down and take it down that way. Um, yeah, their burrows, it can be other, I'm sorry, numbers are a little bigger. They need to be about six to eight inches in diameter. So about a softball size hole is what they'll go straight into. Um, Toxic Soul, I know you. Why do I know you? Because if you're working in Kirkland, you're around here, I probably know you. Okay, there we go. Worked at Eastside. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, I appreciate you tuning in. You would definitely let the other uh, Eastside crew know that I'm doing these. So I don't know if you've told them that as well. <laughs> um. But yes, the um, the longest... Oh, you left them a while ago. Okay. Got it. Okay, no problem. I mean, so did I. <laughs> no hating on them, just difference of opinion on things. That's okay. Um, the deepest burrow found uh, in the wild of studying these mountain beaver tunnels was about 100 feet deep deep into a hillside and this is one that was actively being used um, they found it to be that deep and the animal just kept digging and patting down because they actually have a toilet that's further in the tunnel and so what they'll do is they'll keep using it and when it gets soiled they bury it and they just keep going deeper so they will go as deep as they need to but if the whole tunnel gets way too soiled they'll end up um, just abandoning the tunnel altogether Shortly after you, I started getting in my opinion, in my opinion, bullied by some of the other follow-up texts. Fair enough. Everybody, you know what? And things happen. You know what? Uh, Eastside's going to do what they're going to do, and that is their business to run, their business to handle. Not my monkeys, not my circus anymore. So what happened happened, and I just hope you've got yourself in a better situation. That's really all that happened or really matters out here. So... I wish them well, and I hope you're doing good, too, honestly. I hope you found a, either a place or a job you like, or uh, if it's a different career, fabulous. I'm all for that. Yes, they do have a latrine. Actually, beavers don't have a full latrine, but they have an area that they will uh, they'll poop in the water. Uh, Castor, uh, Castor canadensis. They will act the, water, the American beaver. They will actually poop and it literally looks like wood pulp it literally just looks like a turd but wood pulp because that's literally all the beavers eat is so much herbivorous and, and fibrous material it looks like a piece of plywood turned into a turd it's 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 the goofiest thing from what i in terms of identifying uh animal feces <laughs> um with mountain beavers they can tend to have anywhere from two to four young are born after a 30-day gestation period. So pretty quick, but they are rodents, so rodents do breed pretty quickly. Um, they are also very solitary. They don't create uh, big colony holes or, or big colony groups. They try very hard not to interact with each other. So when I do a, an area for mountain beaver removal, I'll set several traps 
at several different boroughs because they only go so far outside their borough space before they need to um, completely move to a different location altogether and start a new tunnel. So they will, um, they tend to be fairly solitary until it's time for them to mate. Then they'll cohabitate, then they'll start raising the young, and then they become solitary shortly thereafter. Uh, breeding takes place from February to April. So fairly soon I will be seeing a big upswing in mountain beaver activity. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, predators, they pretty much anything you think can eat them will. So bobcats, coyotes, owls, uh, fishers, they're a type of weasel. They're bigger, a little bigger than the size of a cat. Um, cougars and bears on occasion. Uh, weasel and mink will eat the young ones uh, because they can get down into the tunnel systems. Uh, a lot of times the when it comes to rebuilding agricultural areas, mountain beavers will be trapped and removed completely in order to stop them from uh, obliterating replants after an area has been logged or cleared for some commercial use. They need to make sure that they're either removed completely or that barriers are put in place that the animals can't destroy the, the trees as they grow and develop. So there's a whole bunch of different things that go on with that. Um, let's see here. I don't need this one. Um, yeah, their kidney system is pretty bad. They will also do a similar behavior with like rabbits where they will re-ingest their droppings in order to maintain and get more of those, uh, one, the moisture as well as um, the nutrients. They get that out of their, they get that in their system as well. Um, coloration, it's pretty drab. They're not a very pretty looking animal as you can see on the picture here I have. Um, Brown, black, gray variants. Uh, occasionally, if the genetics match up, there can be fairly reddish, like a rusty red kind of thing. Um, but it's not It's not a lot. They're not a great-looking animal. They're just there. <laughs> uh, because they have um, changed so little, uh, in the evolutionary terms, they are actually registered as what's called a living fossil very similar to the, uh, the opossum, Didelphus virginiana, the one we talked about uh, last time. Let's see. So one area actually has the mountain beaver listed as endangered. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's called the Point, area, uh, Point Arena mountain beaver down in California. It is a, uh, a subspecies of the mountain beaver family. Um, let's see here. Yeah, the, the mountain beavers in general are very specific in their genus and family and phylum and all that. They're the only one in uh, Apodonte is the uh, the word for it. Um, because their Latin name, let me pull it up here. I always stumble over it. It's... Uh, Aplodontia rufa is their Latin name. So you can see where you can stumble over that. Here, I'll put the uh, I'll put the Latin name in chat here just so you guys can see. Uh, there's not yeah these guys they're so. They're so basic. There's so little about these guys. My no I blew through most of my notes already. Uh, what the mountain beavers? Um, they're very. They're, I say they're dopey in the fact that they have bad eyesight and bad um, hearing. But their sense of smell and feel is really good, um, because they're used to being in a tunnel system and working in the darkness. So their sense of smell is awesome. So when it comes to dealing with removal of these guys. I'll just put apple slices in because they go for stuff that's very water-based in their diet. So that way it makes it much easier for them to um, actually be able to get their kidneys to process properly because they need to ingest so much water and all of that. Close that. So actually it looks like we have somebody new, Tucson's is joining us today with uh, Toxic Soul and Lost Core Core. So I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I really do. Um, 
I don't expect this base to grow anytime quickly, but yes, I do. I do appreciate you all. And as a reminder, if you got water, drink it. I'll always be drinking water. So it looks like the very first of these mountain beavers was found in 1817. That was when they were first cataloged um, as Apodonte Rufa Rufa. That is the very first one found in 1817. That was here in Washington in particular. After that, they were found um, in, uh, make sure I got my dates right. Then California, the Sierra Nevada of Northern California. Then there was the Cascade Ridge, uh, Cascade Range from Southern British Columbia, which is Canada. Um, another pocket found in San Francisco, uh, regular distribution across coastal Florida. And then lastly in um, Northwest coast of California and a small region in Southern uh, Mendoki Mendocino, Mendocino County in California as well. So they're pretty tight when it comes to where they are. So it's literally just the entire west coast of the country is where they're found. Let's see. I had a thing of what diseases they can carry. Oh, here's something wild. Bug collectors love these guys and here's why. So there is, everybody knows, everybody's got their own um, entomologist friend or a bug collector, people that like to study the insects. These guys are a host to the world's largest flea, literally called the giant flea. Uh, and people will pay big dollars for these things. It is, it is to me, it is hilarious. Um, it is also known as the mountain beaver flea, specifically. And they are only found wherever the mountain beavers are at. So I'm not going to lie. When I have uh, had an animal that was beyond saving and I had to dispatch it, I will find a way and I will extract the fleas. I'll put them in little uh, collector's vials and sell them. And you can get anywhere from $50 to $100 per flea off of these animals because they're only found on the mountain beaver. And they're only found in the West Coast, predominantly the Pacific Northwest of North America. So bug collectors all over the world go nuts if you can get one. So there is actually good money in that. I, I It is... As we all know, guys like me, guys that do past work, guys that do bug collection and all that, we're all a little weird. That should go without saying. But these guys, you can actually get money based on the parasites that these will carry. Go figure. Just how it happens. Um, Okay, um, in terms of stop that, I'm trying to find, there's not a lot of parasites that can really, or not parasites, not a lot of diseases you can actually get from these animals. Um, the main thing is, is the flea, the giant flea. Uh, there are a type of, of uh, mite that'll gather on them too. But they really, they were checked to see if they actually carried plague because prairie dogs will carry the plague, the bubonic plague. Well, technically, it's the flea that's on them that carries the plague and the prairie dogs carry it, but you get it. That's how it works. But they found these guys to be pretty clean, all things considered. I mean, there's the usuals of uh, the risk of like uh, leptospirosis, histoplasmosis, all that can come from the feces, but you're never going to really encounter the feces of these guys as well as with the urine, they don't urinate as much as a normal animal does because they have to drink so much water. It's hard for them to really keep anything in their body to contract or to spread the disease for. And even then, you're more likely to get um, leptospirosis from a raccoon by eating on a picnic table than you ever will from catching something from these guys. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, these guys, they are, they're just a goofy little thing. So I had a, I had a job 
where they had a mountain beaver problem. No, we were trying to get rid of some rabbits for a prize winning tens of thousand dollar garden that they were trying to save from rabbit damage. Because it was going to be shown for, it had gotten awards, it had gotten prizes, all these other things. They got endorsements for different things. They used it for filming different um, scenes or people would use it for photo shoots, for weddings and engagement pictures, all that other stuff. We ended up catching a mountain beaver at one of them. And they're like, well, we don't want it taken away. Can you just let it go? I'm like, okay. And I did what I needed to. I let it go at the edge of the property. So I, I plonked him out and he just sat there. Just looking up at me like what? Am I supposed, am I supposed to go something? And I, I actually nudged him with my boot. Just go. Be away. Do what you will. Go away, little animal. He just kind of sat there and I kept nudging him. Just kind of being here like what? Oh, am I supposed to do a thing? He kind of looked around a little bit more. Then he just starts walking away. Just trundling away, easy as you please goofiest little animals that just they don't care uh, vocalizations um there's, there's been the occasional grunt and squeal uh akin to most rodents that they'll do but predominantly they're they're very quiet um they really don't do a lot of communication out in the world just general interaction with other animals <sighs> let's see their front feet are goofy as all, are, are their, their front feet are wicked to look at. It's literally Edward Scissorhands kind of front feet because they have the elongated claws for digging. And they have the big, the shoulders and the body is designed for um, aggressive digging, similar to a groundhog or any typical burrowing animal. But for them, when they sit up, they pull their claws in like this. So it's literally like Freddy or uh, Edward Scissorhands, his, his fingers are just hanging right up there. Uh, but they're, it's, if you ever get a chance, here, actually, you know, I'll see if I can't take this, borrow this picture real quick. Let me post this up so you guys can see. Do, 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 image, change, add. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Hmm. Oh, down there. There. So this is a the feet and the walking pattern is basically they walk right over their own footprints. So this is what the, the there you have the back feet at the bottom there and the front feet are up at the top. And you can see what I mean by those super long claws. They're actually they're cool but they're creepy looking all at the same time. So um, it's it's they're one of the cooler animals. They're dopey. They're very simplistic animals. It's it's kind of hilarious honestly for me. Um, but that's all there is for the mountain beavers. There's not a lot that goes on with these guys. They're just pretty much there. Now, if we want to shift gears onto something a little more interesting, this is something a friend of mine brought up as something that we were just talking about because, let's see. Change the picture yet again. I'm sure a lot of streamers don't actually show their work when they're doing stuff like this. I uh, chat box is hiding a little bit. Leopard seals. Leopard seals are um, they're they're a wild animal. Um, they are found explicitly in the Arctic because they are actually listed as. Let me find the word. Pagophilic. Pagophilic, meaning they love to be around ice. So they are found explicitly in the southern uh, southern hemisphere, explicitly around the Arctic, or Antarctica in general. Uh, they have been recorded around Australia, New Zealand, South America, and South Africa. But predominantly, they are going to be around Antarctica. Now, these guys are big. Um, they can be anywhere from 8 to 12 feet long and weighing anywhere from, from 500 
to 1,400 pounds. The big males definitely get that big. Um, they have the same length as a walrus, but they only weigh half as much. Their whiskers are also shorter because they're much more of a predatory hunter, whereas the walrus is a, um, a, a, scour a scourer. They tend to search uh, the seabed for clams, mussels, squid, whatever they can find. These guys will straight up hunt. So they'll take uh, small or young seals um, with occasional cannibalization. They'll eat their own kind. Um, they'll eat squid, fish, penguins. These guys are known for going after penguins. Uh, on a regular basis, um, they'll go for uh, krill. Though, like the the southern elephant seal pups, they'll go after them because they are just that brazen. They'll go after uh, seabirds. Um, basically, they go after pretty much whatever they can get their mouth around, quite literally. So they're 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 a pretty wild animal. Now they have also had encounters with humans. Um, there's a couple of what are called negative interactions with humans. A leopard seal attacked and an explorer in one of the Arctic expeditions from 1914 to 1917. Um, it was a big one. About They estimated it to be about 12 feet long. Chased the guy on the ice. He was only saved by another member when they shot it because it kept coming after him. And that was in 19... 1914, 1917, it was in that time window of the expedition. In 1985, another explorer was bitten twice on the leg when a leopard seal tried to drag him off the ice into the sea and was only saved because his uh, companions were wearing those ice cleats, the big, uh, they're called crampons, um, on, their, on their shoes to, in order for them to ice climb. They had to kick it in the face several times with those spiked boots to get it to let go. The guy didn't die, he got back and he was able to recover. These animals are strong enough, they will drag you to the water, which is unfortunately what happened in 2003. A biologist was killed by a leopard seal while snorkeling. Uh, it is the first recorded human fatality of a leopard seal. Um, she was snorkeling in the water when the team heard her scream and then disappear under the water. Uh, she was rescued, but they were unable to resuscitate her because they may have, um, the animals don't understand playing, or playing as we call it. The concept of killing a human means nothing to them. You're a thing, you're in their water, you're in their environment, you did something wrong, they'll make you pay for it in whatever way they deem necessary. And so it's, um, unfortunately, she did end up um, passing away. The ultimate death was from... Um, Oh, here we go. It gets even worse. It was later revealed that the seal had held her underwater for six minutes at a depth of 70 meters in a snorkel kit. She also had 45 separate injuries, most of which were concentrated, concentrated around her head and neck. That thing was trying to eat her head. That thing was trying to eat and kill her. Just flat out. That's exactly what I was trying to do. Um, they're actually pro uh, proposing to not have as many uh, water researchers or research done in the water with these leopard seal populations because they're afraid that continued exposure to humans will one increase their familiarity with them as well as um, could cause more aggression acting out towards them or the researchers by the animals. Um, let's see. They're not, there isn't a lot, a ton of study done about these guys. Um, like most marine mammals, they communicate underwater and their decibel range can be anywhere from 153 to 177 decibels um, for many hours each day. And that, that's just underwater talking and that's just how they communicate. Um, populations are really strong in this small of an area. It can be, this area, it's anywhere from 220,000 to 440,000 animals. So they are listed as a least concern because of the um, climate zone and where they live. And they are thriving so very well. Let's see. Um, oh, I was wrong about something. The females are slightly larger than the males. So I was wrong. Yeah, you can take that for the record. I was wrong. Um, 
as they're also listed as what's called a true seal. They do not have external ears or pinnae, and, but possess an internal ear canal that leads to external opening. So they just have a hole inside of their head. That's what makes them a true seal. Um, while the hearing in the air is similar to that of a human, scientists have noted that leopard seals use their ears in conjunction with their whiskers to track prey underwater. That is really, really cool, the way how these guys work. And I love this word, pagophilic. Pagophilic, they are ice-loving animals, which is why you only find them in that southern area. That's just so cool. I love learning about these new types of things like this. Um, let's see, what else was there? And my notes for these guys are a little scattered because um, this is something, if I had time, I was going to throw it in. And since I'm only just about hitting a half hour here, I figured, why not? Let's, let's talk about it and see what more we can think of. Um, for breeding, uh, gestation is 274 days. That is a long time. So that is actually um, akin to a human's pregnancy is nine months, just a touch over nine months for carrying a pup. Um, they hit sexual maturity at, um, starting at three years old and the males at six years old is when they start breeding. So they actually have to be surviving for a while before they can do it. Uh, mating occurs January from December to January, following uh, in the fall is when they end up giving birth. Newborn pups are about 66 pounds. I uh, stay with their the female for a month before they're mean or are weaned off. The male does not participate in raising the pup at all. It goes back to a solitary lifestyle. This is actually very very common for a lot of animal species where the males come in. They're literally a donor for the breeding purpose, and the female is the one left to take care of all of it. And that's just how nature works sometimes. Um, an animal we talked about recently is the raccoon. This is incredibly common for them. The female, when she is about ready to give birth, will deliberately chase off the male in order to raise the pups. It doesn't matter if it's the one that bred with her or anything like that. She just chases them away and that's it. Because what will happen is other males will come in and try to uh, kill the pups in order to put her back into heat and have another litter with her. Continuation of the genetic reign just how it happens. So that's actually a technique that we use for raccoons is we'll take glands turned into a paste from a raccoon, smear that near the access point of where the female is raising her litter. She will smell that, panic, and take the pups and leave. Just either that night or within a day or two, she'll take them and flat out leave. Now, I don't think that would work with this situation, but we don't have to worry about these guys getting into a home. So... I don't think that's going to be a huge issue unless you decide to build your house on the ice <laughs> down in Antarctica. So um, that's really all I had for you guys today. This is one of this is just a shorter one today. Um, the problem with mountain beavers is that they're, they're so simple. There's so little about the animals that there's not much to uh, really go on about. Um, but I appreciate you guys stopping in. Um, hanging out with me regardless. Um, and I, and we also still have our, uh, I still need a subject for Friday. Uh, if anybody wants to throw me an idea, I prefer to do, um, submissions, uh, for on Tuesday for my Friday cast. So that way, if you guys got any ideas, either a species, a concept, um, I know at one point somebody had messaged about understanding, since we have um, um, birthing season is coming up for animals, if not already starting in different parts of the country, is understanding what to do if you find a litter of animals, be it squirrels, rabbits, raccoons, whatever, um, kind of understanding the practice of what you need to do and what you shouldn't do with a lot of that. So as they say, spring is in the air. Um, we'll probably make that our subject for Friday. But I'm always open to uh, ideas, guys. I really appreciate you all hanging with me. Um, like I say, give me ideas. Give me things to talk about. I love talking about this. Because the leopard seal thing, that was just a cross-conversation I was having with somebody online earlier today. And I figured, hey, this is cool. 
I'll throw something in on this to make sure uh, it's something that we can touch on more later, or at least we can talk about seals in general. So, but I guess I, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Um, can I do otters? Oh, can I do otters? <laughs> Uh, I did touch on otters before. Uh, you can, I think I might have it on my YouTube. No, I don't think that one. Um, Sister enjoyed my otter YouTube videos. Yeah, no, I definitely can. Um, oh, yeah, 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 those ones. Yeah, I can absolutely check those out. All right, I see about getting that one done. Yeah, we can absolutely talk about the otters again. Um, that, oh, that's what happened. I did talk about the otters before, but I wasn't able to record it. I was too dumb and forgot to hit the button to actually record the video so I couldn't post it on YouTube. <laughs> but yes, we can definitely do that and, um, see about getting that posted up so that you guys can, uh, we can, we can all talk about the otters. We'll talk about, uh, so just so you know, I'll give you a quick summary of what we'll be discussing. It will be the, uh, the river otter, the sea otter and the small clawed Asian, or the Asian small clawed otter is what we will be discussing uh, for the, for on Friday. So we'll go ahead, we'll touch on that, and then we'll probably do Tuesday. Next Tuesday will be the, um, the offspring season, is what I call it, uh, discussion, and we'll go about things from there. So fabulous. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me, and thank you for the uh, submission. I'm sure I will be able to do, um, I'll be doing a lot more requests about otters as well. Yes, yeah, so you can. If you can tell, otters are a big passion for me because it's it's such a niche service to do out here for people that end up getting animals under the homes. We absolutely will be talking about otters a lot, and I'm okay with that because I love talking about them and I love rediscovering or discovering new stuff about them. So as research comes up, I'll be keeping on top of that and doing that with you guys. So thanks again. Have yourself a good evening, and remember, drink water. <laughs>